Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name's Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. Uh, I took a little vacation there and uh, I hope you guys missed me because I missed y'all. Uh, we're still working on our M113 Armored Personnel Carrier by Tamiya and uh, this is going to be part 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some weathering uh, on the main vehicle and uh, we're going to paint up some figures. Now I'm not really good at figures but we're going to give that a shot. And also uh, the final reveal, which I know you guys have been waiting on. So let's jump down to the bench here and uh, get this thing done. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and disassemble this again. <laughs> I know we've had this thing apart so many times, but uh, luckily everything fits well and we haven't broken anything yet. So that's, <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, so what we have here is some AK enamel weathering products. Uh, we're going to be using these to do our weathering. Now this comes in a pack, and I think it's well worth the uh, the price that you pay for these because they last a very long time, and they really do a good job. Um, I don't know that we're going to be using this really, really dark one right over here, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if we need to use that. The, the paint on uh, this vehicle is particularly dark, so that might not even show up. So, first one we're going to start off with will be the light color. And we'll also be using some enamel thinner. I use this to thin the product out a little bit. Uh, it helps, number one, with the drying time and uh, also helps with application. Now, <laughs> once these bottles sit around for a little bit, it gets a little bit difficult to get these lids off. So I am using uh, my mechanical help here uh, to get that off. Now our mixture here is about 50-50 of the uh, weathering product and uh, the enamel thinner. And that helps it kind of flow around stuff. Uh, we don't want it really, really thin, but we do want it to kind of wick around. And as you can see here, I'm just dabbing in on the uh, sponson areas here. And there's going to be dirt and dust and stuff that's going to collect there. So we'll just go ahead and put a little bit there. And of course, with our troops entering and exiting uh, through the ramp area here, uh, that's going to get covered up with some mud too. So we're going to use this lighter color of uh, um, mud just to cover the ramp area a little bit. So I do give this a little bit of time to dry. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry. I just want it dry enough so that I can manipulate it with a slightly damp brush here using the enamel thinner. And we're just going to push it around and blend it in. Uh, kind of give it a dirty, mottled look here. We can even pull it up the sides just a little bit. Now these sponson areas is where the crew is going to have their ammo cans and their rucksacks and, and all that other stuff. So uh, it's going to collect some dirt and dust and stuff. So, so on our deck plates, uh, we do want it to be uh, a bit of a mottled look. Model, modeled. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm going to go over it and kind of relieve uh, the enamel product off of the, uh, the diamond plate. And then uh, we're going to use the enamel thinner to just relieve uh, on the top of these cleats uh, some of that mud so that we can see some of that dry brushing that we put on before. We kind of want that to shine through. Now we're using the medium color. Uh, and I just dab out some into my palette here, and we're going to add just a little bit of uh, uh, Tester's enamel thinner with it there. Kind of thin it out a little bit. And we mix it up pretty good here. And now we can start going around on the uh, outside of the vehicle. And it will just run right around. So the concept here is, of course, you're going to keep your darker colors low on the vehicle. And uh, later on when we do our streaking, we'll streak it with a lighter color. But we want to cover around uh, anywhere where mud could get thrown up. Also, do our road wheels and uh, get those nice and muddy for us. Now I'm kind of going for a lighter uh, weathering and, and muddy look here. Uh, not the real thick, deep stuff. Uh, now, of course, that would change if you intended to put this on a diorama 
or some little vignette or something uh, you might want to have it uh, a bit thicker so we're going to use that same dark color we're going to come back in on our floor plates and we're going to add some there um, concept here is that it's going to be darker where the soldiers are walking most often so and a little bit lighter on the edges and then we'll come back with uh, some enamel thinner and just kind of get rid of any harsh lines that we might have I just kind of like that easy transition between our different shades and I do a little bit of blending as well here on our ramp area just to make it just a little bit more natural looking so we are going to continue around the outside, the exterior, <laughs> the exterior of the vehicle and uh, kind of feather that hard line that we got going on there. Uh, we will be blending a little bit more of the lighter color when, once we start doing the, ex, the, the top portion, I should say, uh, of the hull itself. But we just want to get rid of this hard line all the way around. So now I need to go ahead and put the vehicle together again. <laughs> I think we got to take it apart one more time uh, and the reason why we're going to do this is because we're going to start doing our uh, weathering on the exterior and I want it fully assembled for that so we need to go ahead and drop in our engine deck as well and get everything into place so once it's assembled uh, we're going to go ahead and put a light uh, coat of enamel thinner here using a clean brush uh, onto the surface um, we're just we're going to do the uh, horizontal surface first we start at the top and uh, what this enamel thinner is going to do is it's going to help our uh, weathering product to disperse and flow out uh, across the top of the vehicle and uh, in addition to that the added benefit is going to be that we won't have any of those horrible tide marks which are almost impossible to get rid of uh, and if you've ever chased tide marks across your vehicle you know what I'm talking about so start off with uh, that nice little layer of uh, enamel thinner and that can eliminate that for you uh, at least minimize it <laughs> so. now when it comes to the front of the vehicle we're also going to put the uh, enamel thinner on it there just a little thin coat yeah you don't have to oversaturate it or anything and then we'll just lay down the enamel product just need to get it on there now since this is a sloping surface and of course the sides of the vehicle are vertical what we're going to be doing is using a um, a blush a, br a blush <laughs> a brush i can't even talk today my goodness but uh, we're going to use a brush, and I'm using a wide one here, uh, just to pull and streak uh, that uh, mud down across the uh, surface of the vehicle here. So the rule is, whichever way water runs off is which way you want to streak uh, the vehicle. So we'll just pull that down. And of course, we're going to do the exact same thing for the sides of the vehicle and for the rear of the vehicle as well and this goes pretty quick so uh, it's always best to do it all in one sitting uh, you don't want to do one side today and the other side tomorrow because it might not be uniform all right so while our vehicle is drying i guess we're going to turn our attention to these these uh, figures <laughs> and I really I really dislike doing figures and that's because I, I really don't have a good method to do them so I'm hoping that we can discover that uh, in this video maybe a way that we can get this done and get it done as easy as possible so the first step of course is we're gonna have to cut our parts off the sprues and uh, I always like to leave the sprue gates a little long and it makes it easier for me to trim them up later Speaking of which, uh, these parts are going to need a lot of cleanup. As most of these figures, especially in these old kits, oh, they can be, you know, rather time consuming. And since we have five of these to do, I'm not going to show every single thing that I do uh, to clean these up. 
suffice to say, this would be a very long video. Uh, but I do like to use my uh, hobby knife here to scratch those uh, seam lines down for the molds. Uh, of course, you're going to have that, and in most cases, these seam lines uh, will go right down the sides of the, uh, the, uh, the figures. Once we get everything cleaned up to our liking, uh, it's time to glue them together. And here we're just using the Tamiya thick cement for that. Uh, it holds really well, uh, and it does take hold rather quickly, but it does still give us the opportunity to actually move and position our parts uh, just in case that we don't have the alignment very well. In the case of uh, two of our figures, they are uh, holding rifles, so we're going to want to make sure that they are able to convincingly <laughs> hold uh, the rifle. So that little bit of adjustment time that we're going to have uh, with this thick cement is going to give us that opportunity to make sure that that's all the way it needs to be. And as you can see here, his hands are in the right position. So we'll go ahead and work on the other figures. So it is helpful to place your figures onto the vehicle uh, to make sure that they are sitting where they're supposed to sit and uh, that their arms are in the right spot, especially for our track commander there. Uh, he needs to grab onto uh, the periscopes. So yeah, everything's in the right area, right where we want them, in the correct position. Now, as you can see here, we're going to have some seams, especially in the shoulder areas. Uh, and to fill those seams, we're going to be using perfect plastic putty. Now, this is a water-based product, which really, really helps. I, since discovering this, uh, I really like using it. Here, I'm just going to use a cocktail stick or a toothpick, whichever you prefer. And I'm just pushing it down into the seams and I'm able to manipulate it uh, pretty good using our, our toothpick. We just want to make sure that we get the product down into the seam. Now don't worry about the mess, you know, ar around that uh, seam area. Uh, that's pretty easily cleaned up and I'll, I'll show you how we're going to do that. And that's going to be with a wet well, not a sopping wet, <laughs> uh, a sufficiently damp uh, cotton bud or uh, a Q tip or earbud uh, <laughs> uh, or cotton swab. I don't know what, whatever terminology you'd like to use for it. But uh, with the water, what we're doing is we are going across the top of the uh, the filler. Now the filler, I allow that to dry completely before doing this. That way we're not pulling the uh, the filler out of the joint. What we're doing is we're just re-moistening uh, the surface area and we're allowing our cotton swab here to pull away all the excess. And that'll leave the uh, filler right into the cracks and crevices that we wanted to fill. So it works really good for this, and uh, that's what makes this so easy to use. And for those harder to reach areas, we can use a, uh, a toothpick, uh, slightly dampened, and we can just manipulate uh, down into the little areas that we couldn't get to with a cotton swab. And then once we've done that, we can come back with a cotton swab and just kind of dry it off. Easy peasy. All right, with all of our cracks and crevices <laughs> filled, <laughs> uh, we need some way to hold our figures. So we're gonna use our handy drill here from Tamiya. And uh, in an inconspicuous spot, I'm gonna drill a small hole. I think I'm using a one millimeter here. And that way we can take our cocktail stick and add a handle. And just like that, uh, we'll be able to uh, hold on to our, our soldiers here without having to touch them um, for painting. Speaking of which, I've got them all primed up now in uh, Vallejo Black. 
and that's a black acrylic water base and we can also check out those seams to make sure that the especially on the shoulders that we don't have any big gaps or anything there so those are looking pretty good so for our next step we're going to do a little bit of pre-shading on this uh, we just have to see how this works now this is the uh, mixture that I've used before this is our interior color uh, and it is the uh, pale gray and I, and I try to keep the number of colors that we're using uh, as simple and as few as possible so you can see here it's uh, water-based acrylic pale gray and that's craft paint and I do use my airbrush thinner from Vallejo to uh, to thin that with so now it's off to the spray booth. Now the concept here is to spray from above, which <laughs> I'm trying to do is the, the best I can, but I do want to get enough paint on there. Uh, one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to start your spray on the piece. You want to start away from the piece and move the airstream onto the actual figure. And as you can see there, uh, from spraying above we do have some nice little highlights going on so that looks pretty decent so now it's time to move on and that is to do the color so now this is yellow and if you didn't know yellow and black makes uh, OD green now the one on the uh, left is the OD green that we sprayed our vehicle with the one on the right I added some more yellow to it to get a lighter uh, OD green, which is we're gonna use for our base color for our figures. So that's what we're gonna spray all the guys with. And here you can see, uh, we've got them all painted up nice and green. So <laughs> some of that pre-shading is coming through, which is, which is great. Uh, uh, it, looks, it looks okay at this stage. And now I'm going to use some flat green. Now this is a tester's enamel. And we're going, to, we're going to go to my good old standby, which is dry brushing. So I do wet the bristles just a little bit. And we'll dip it into the paint. And we're going to unload most of this off of the brush. We don't want to paint it. We want to dry brush it. And we're just going to transfer those pigments right onto all of the raised areas. Uh, on the figure and we can use as much pressure as we like here uh, we want to go kind of heavy with it and we're going to transfer that green paint uh, onto our figure and I, I get a much better result this way I tried the uh, the wet palette thing uh, in different shades and to be honest with you they kind of looked like uh, <laughs> green clowns looking for a clown car to to ride in <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't work out so I went back to my fail safe I guess you could call it which is dry brushing which I can control much easier and so we're just going to really throw that green on and just to give you an example here show you kind of what we end up with there so it's lightened up that color quite a bit and the dry brushing is bringing out the details in the uniform, all the little, all the folds. And the darker green that we sprayed on is down in the recesses. And you can see what a difference it is between the one that's painted on the left and the one that has not been dry brushed on the right. So that looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. So we're going to continue on with dry brushing. And in this case, we're going to use a flat tan here. And again, it is an enamel product, which is really easy to dry brush. And I'm using a very long bristle brush. That way we are not really getting too deep uh, into those nooks and crannies and crevices <laughs> and everything on the uniform. We're just hitting the highlights uh, with that tan. As you can see there, uh, how that tan really uh, allows those details to pop for us. So that's looking even better and I'm liking how that's coming out so while our enamels are drying we're gonna go back to that Vallejo 
black that we primed everything in. So that's just the airbrush mixture here. And we're just going to refresh our boots and get those painted back up black because these guys had black boots. Now with the boots painted up, we're going to use this uh, parched grass. Uh, that's kind of my Vallejo OD green color. And we're going to use that for his uh, web gear here. Suspenders, the belt, also our canteens, uh, or I should say canteen covers. Uh, and we're just going to lightly paint that in. And that gives a nice contrast. It's really hard to get multiple different contrasts uh, when you're painting everything green. <laughs> so uh, these different shades really helps bring those details out for us. Now we're going to take a look at all of our flesh colored areas. Faces and arms and hands. Now this is a uh, craft paint as well. You know I like to use those craft paints. Uh, this is flesh color, but as you can see, it is, <laughs> you know, kind of against that dark green, it looks rather stark and white, uh, but that's okay, because this is just our base um, color that we're going to be putting in uh, to give us a good foundation for the next step in uh, taking care of our skin tones. And that's going to be using panel liner. Now we do wait for the flesh color <laughs> as, as not quite flesh as it <laughs> is supposed to be. Uh, anyway, we wait for our flesh color to dry completely. And then we come back over it with uh, Tamiya's panel liner. And I'm just going to apply this rather liberally uh, just on the flesh. And this will have an added benefit. It's going to stain that uh, flat acrylic paint, uh, a darker brown color. So next, we take a clean brush and some enamel thinner. And just like you would clean up um, panel lines on, uh, on any particular model that you're doing, uh, we're actually removing the brown panel liner from the higher areas and doing a little blending. Uh, this is going to give us hopefully <laughs> a passable uh, skin tone and also leave that panel liner in the darker or the more recessed areas I should say uh, to give uh, a lot more uh, visual uh, interest uh, to our figure. And so he's coming along okay. So need to work a little bit more around the nose area and into the eye sockets some. And uh, also around his hands and fingers and what have you. Uh, just to give it the impression that uh, it is a, a <laughs> convincing skin tone. Um, I told you before, I'm not really good on figures and I need to work on my... Uh, skills there when it comes to skin tones. Uh, he needs a couple of areas of touch-up, but he's starting to look pretty decent. <laughs> so, not too bad. A little more work, and he'll get there. So the next thing, uh, after all that has dried, is I don't really like our guys walking around with the uh, tops of their heads missing. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little... I don't know, gory looking. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and put their helmets on. And at this point, we can start accessorizing our guys. So we are using the Tamiya Thick Cement for this. Um, it has a lot of holding power, and I'm not too worried about these popping off. Now for our Track Commander's head, uh, which is separate, which really makes the painting of the skin tone so much easier when they are separate but since he's the only one that had a separate head uh, we're going to use the CA glue here to attach his head hopefully that'll give us a little bit more purchase alright now when it comes to our radio I did make an antenna for it using a small piece of copper wire 
and a thin flat piece of aluminum and what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of test exactly where that radio needs to go before we glue it into place and when it comes to the antenna uh, I've, I made it basically the same way that we're going to make our rifle slings and I'll show you how I did that but I'm going to use the uh, CA glue again in this case to hold our radio man's radio uh, onto his load bearing equipment there just make sure that we get him all lined up and I think those little extra details that you add like the um, antenna for the radio is really brings you know a, a lot more character to the kit now we can go ahead since we got the CA glue out uh, and attach our rifles so a little bit in the palms of the hands of the soldier and then we can just position our rifles into place now when it came to the weapons of course that's a little bit of dry brushing there on the metal parts uh, with a little bit of that enamel flat steel kind of bring out some of those details but you want to make sure that you don't get that flat steel uh, onto the hand guards which are basically a black plastic material now you are going to get some CA glue in some areas that you are going to be able to see, but don't worry about that uh, because once all the equipment is on the soldiers, one of the last things we're going to do is give everything a coat of uh, uh, matte flat uh, clear and uh, that'll just take care of any shiny spots that we've got. So here are the other accessories that are in the kit. We got two M60 machine guns, one of which I did cut the bipod legs off and then glue them back into a folded position. Give us a little bit more variety there. And we've got a couple of uh, backpacks with the uh, entrenching tools on them and some ammo cans. And we also got a grenade launcher. Can't remember the model of that. Is that the M72 grenade launcher? I don't really remember. But anyway, we're going to be putting all this uh, equipment here inside the vehicle itself. Now, when it comes to putting our equipment inside the vehicle, or any stowage on any vehicle, I like to kind of stage it first, kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like and whether or not I need to move things around. So it's, I think it's always a good idea to do that uh, before you commit to glue and <laughs> permanently attach these items. So we're going to jump back to our figures here again, and I'm going back to this tan that we used before on the uniforms when we dry brush those. And what we're going to do here is just to go ahead and use it on the boots. So those boots are just way too black for me. Uh, soldiers that are walking around and climbing up and down on vehicles and everything, they're going to scuff that black right down to the leather. So we're going to use that tan there to kind of bring those scuff marks out. Heels and toes and just a little bit on the sides uh, of the boots should give us a, enough of a wear indication there to kind of keep that from looking kind of fake if you <laughs> I can't, for, the, for the search of a better word. Now this is the aluminum from a baking, a disposable aluminum baking dish. Uh, you know, the ones that you get lasagna in or what have you. You can buy those without the lasagna. <laughs> but uh, what I've done is I've cut them into strips. Uh, that one was a little bit too wide. Uh, this is more to my liking here. But as you can see, it's nice and thin. And what I've done is I've primed it with Mr. Metal Primer and then painted it with our Vallejo, uh, was it latte gra or grass, whatever it was. I can't remember now, but uh, my OD green. <laughs> so that gives us our rifle slings. And now all we have to do is to affix them to the rifles. So I do have my helping hands here, which really helps 
so that I don't have to chase that figure around while I'm trying to manipulate uh, those little strips of aluminum for our uh, rifle slings. Now here we're just going to take and do some initial bends and kind of get the profile that we want for our rifle sling before we commit to glue. And we'll start out um, with our medium CA glue again because now we're attaching metal uh, to uh, polystyrene. So we're going to have to use this uh, CA glue for this. And we're going to very carefully start at the top of the rifle there, right where the sling swivel would be, just in front of the handguard. And get it positioned where we want it. Now once the top portion sets up, we can go ahead and cut that to length. Now once it's cut to length, we'll just add a little bit of a bend here. Kind of get it right where we kind of want it. It's, it's a little tedious. And I'm, I'm trying not to put any real sharp creases in it. And once we get that adjusted, all we got to do is add a little CA glue. And then just put the sling right into the CA glue there. Just hold it just long enough for it to take. And that'll hold it in place for us. And there's the first guy with his uh, rifle sling attached. And like I say, this is the same basic method that I used for our antenna on our radio. And I kind of like the profile of that rifle sling with it in the soldier's hands. Now when it comes to our radio guy, he's kind of missing the, uh, the cord that goes to his mic. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to measure what the uh, uh, average length might be there. And I'm just using a really small bit. I think this is an in, in inch. I think it's uh, 0 0.074 diameter. And uh, we're just going to make some uh, wide coils here because uh, these wires for mics and headsets and what have you uh, were usually uh, coiled. So we're just going to create that using a small piece of copper wire there. We'll pull our little drill, uh, drill bit out and that'll give us our coiled wire. And as you can see there, that's what we end up with. So I'm just going to get our general measurement here where I need to cut it so that I can cut it to length. And we can put a small profile bend into it. That'll make it a lot easier to install. Now, once that's done, all we have to do is prime it up for painting. And we're going to use that Mr. Metal Primer for that. I just want to make sure that we don't have any real big drops on there that might, once, once it's dried, it is going to give it a rather ununiform a not uniform appearance uh, and that uh, metal primer dries really quick so all we got to do then is we just hit it with the Vallejo black and then just super glue it into place and that's what it looks like so I think that's a nice little detail there I kind of wish I'd done a little bit more detail on the radio itself but you know maybe next time so now that the figures are all painted up and dry and ready to go, uh, we're going to give them all a good uh, coat of this Model Masters Acryl uh, Flat Clear. And that's my favorite go-to flat clear. And I'm really going to hate it when it disappears entirely. Mm. So before we close everything up, and we won't be able to see all these little details inside the vehicle uh, again, uh, we'll just go ahead and take a look at everything that we've done and I think it's come out looking pretty decent of course that's going to be up to you guys you <laughs> let me know if you if you like how everything has turned out uh, give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate that so this has been a fun build I've really enjoyed it uh, make sure you stick to the end where the uh, uh, the turntable uh, video portion is but my critique on this particular 
uh, model, even for its age. I think it's 1974 is when it came out. Uh, it's a it's a nice kit. Uh, we did do some improvements. We did add the uh, AFE Club uh, tracks to it and did some modifications there for our drive sprockets and what have you so that that would fit. Um, and I do suggest that you think about upgrading your tracks because those old rubber band style tracks aren't, <laughs> aren't the best in the world. Uh, and we did a few other little improvements along the way. But uh, I think it turned out really well. And um, it is a, uh, a nice kit to build. With very few actual fit issues. Uh, one of the issues that I did have is with the, uh, the ramp. Because uh, it was extremely tight and didn't really want to fit very well. And then of course that... Uh, pull release cable on the top hatch which we relocated uh, and that is that is totally to me his fault it was just uh, molded onto the uh, wrong end of the <laughs> of the hatch uh, but as far as the rest of the kit goes uh, most of it fit together really well so I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank all of my subscribers it's because of you guys that uh, I keep making these videos for you to enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you have any comments or anything, I'd love to hear from you. Now, if you're new to the channel, uh, hopefully today, if you're not a subscriber, uh, I maybe earned that subscription from you, and I would appreciate that. So until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.